Hello everybody, today on Geek Aloud we have Ashley from SMG Studios to discuss the Google Play Pass. Now this Play Pass includes hundreds of games and apps with no ads or in-app purchases uh, and new games get added every month. Ashley's here to discuss the business model from a developer standpoint. Oh, thanks for having me. It's very exciting mate. Now just the quick rundown, as I understand it, SMG Studios currently has five games in Google Play Pass. They're Risk, Over the Top Tower Defense, uh, One More Line, and Death Squared, and we've got two that aren't in there, uh, Thumb Drift and Thumbzilla. And so that just brings me to my first question, sort of from a Google standpoint, what says what gets to go into Game Pass and what doesn't? What's that process look like? Uh, I think it's it's editorially controlled. Um, so we got invited quite early on or before it was announced to submit games to it, and we just kind of submitted um, a bunch of the titles. We also didn't know what type of audience would want to play what game. So we have Risk, which is a you know strategy game licensed from Hasbro, mm -hmm. quite in depth. We've got um, Thumb Drift is in there, um, you know, and that's like a hyper casual portrait game. Most popular is obviously Risk. Um, I think just because the amount of content available in it, because um, it's you know quite heavy on um, you know there's a lot of different map packs you can buy. Yes. And also the kind of time that you spend in that game as well is quite long. So, you know, that's been our uh, star performer um, on Play Pass. So, so that's been good for us. It hasn't really cannibalized any of our other um, revenue from what mm -hmm. we saw. So mm -hmm. that was our biggest risk that, you know, everyone would do this. But I think with all of these services, there's a, p a percentage of people who, who use them. And it's not the largest percentage, but it definitely scratches an itch for them or provides them with an experience that they want and they probably wouldn't have gone to our game otherwise so it's all it's almost like a you know any cannibalization there is there's there's uh, an upside for people discovering your game through these platforms so we haven't seen any drop um across the board and if anything um you know you, you wouldn't even like looking at our revenue you wouldn't notice that we would launch another you know platform where it's an all you can eat style um, experience so it's been good for us yeah it, it's been fantastic I mean I've discovered so many new games it's as an end user this is a great service I'm discovering stuff I'd never think to look for so this is phenomenal from an end user standpoint but I wonder whether part of it isn't my stage in life I wonder now that I'm a bit older if that makes any sense have you noticed anything in the numbers yeah. like is there an age skew for people on the service versus the age skill people who buy games directly? Like, are they two different audiences? Yeah. Well, we don't really get that level of data um, back from us. So I think obviously that's uh, okay. probably a little bit of a secret as well. But, you know, I would agree that people that, are, you know, would go on a subscription, especially if, it, uh, you know, there's games that are free to play where they're, you know, monetized through ads. You compare that to, you know, you can play those games without a credit card. You know, as long as you've got a phone, you can play those all you want. Um, yes. Subscription, a subscription model means you've got a credit card, you just pay once and, and yeah. so you never have to worry about it. So if you don't have a credit card, you can't really access some of those. So I don't want to, I don't have the data and I can only guess again, yeah, I'm, fair I'm enough. Like that older generation as well, where it's like, <laughs> I, I think it suits a certain type of uh, player that's just like, you know what, I'd rather just pay $5 a month or, yep. and then not have to think about it. Yes. And I, and I, and I get all the good stuff because my time is more precious, you know, like waiting around watching an ad is not worth yes. my time. Whereas when yeah. you're younger, it's like, hey, I'm getting this game for free and all I have to do is, you know, put my phone down or watch an ad for 30 seconds. Like, that's yes, fine. Yes, you know? exactly. I've got two young boys and I'm totally in that. I, they do see that value proposition. They see ad for free stuff, sure, I'm in. Like, they get it and it's all for their age group, whereas I'm old and fussy and like, no. Can I ask the specifics and uh, of, are, are you guys paid up front? Like, do they sort of say, hey, we'll take this game for three months on the service for X amount, or is it just, we'll add it on there and sales just come in as other sales? Yeah, it's it's the latter. Um, I think that obviously changes on what the game is, um, but because these games were already on the store, already, uh, you know, released, then, you know, there's less risk for the for the developer um, yeah. you know, if it did, if it didn't go well, we could remove it from the store if we wanted to. And our games aren't as high profile. I mean, risk is pretty high profile, but you know, I think every, everything comes down to you know, you know, there's not an endless there's not an endless supply of games. But if they want the top tier games and they weren't receptive to it, then they may have had they may have had budget for them. But for us, it was um, 
you know, just come on the store and, you know, you'll be one of the uh, first few games. And so, you know, you get more activity. Yes. And so, you know, we, we kind of had, there was a bit of a risk on our behalf. There wasn't a huge amount of development needed to make it get into the system. So it was just about, um, you know, adding some DRM, some uh, copyright, so you can turn on and off the features, whether you've got it on your phone based on whether you're a subscriber and a little bit of juggling around with that stuff, but it was it was quite minor. The hardest thing was we couldn't test initially because it wasn't available in Australia. So yeah, there yeah. wasn't a huge amount of work. So the risk versus reward was like, oh, you know what, it's worth, it's worth trying. And with all your partners like Google and Apple, Xbox, Nintendo, if they have a new initiative, you usually try and be part of it. Um, yes. Sometimes they don't work out, but sometimes they do, and it <laughs> just builds, um, uh, builds rapport, I guess. Were you approached at all by Stadia to have any involvement there? Uh, we've spoken to Stadia, and what, one interesting thing for us was we weren't able to develop for them from Australia. Uh, they said, you know, the dev tools ah. and, and, and that um, don't support Australia. So that was a bit of a um, Do you uh, guys have an there. LA well, office, if I'm not mistaken? We, we do, and we could have got around it through that, but um, mm-hmm. the, the timing... You know, with those type of platforms, you kind of want to have a game that's almost about to release or is well underway. Yes. And then, you know, you can kind of come in because if you say to them, hey, we'll have a game ready in two years, they'll be like, well, you know, let's talk in a year's time. Yeah, sure. Um, so, yeah, but I, I, I helped another developer uh, get a game onto Stadia that's been released. Um, so kind of, you know, I had the contact. There was nothing yeah, for us. And I was like, oh, you know, let me let me introduce a friend and get uh, on board them so yeah that's um, great i don't have a i mean i have now a you know a gaming laptop slash work laptop but if mm-hmm. i didn't have that I'd, I'd much prefer the kind of streaming cloud-based computer but yeah. um i think it's just you know it's probably f- for me personally maybe five years too far in in the future too early yeah you know? I think that, yeah, some of those more Central American, well, internet connected households will benefit from it now. But I think you're right. In about five years, the technology will have permeated out to make it more accessible for everyone. Yeah, like we're we're just struggling to do a uh, you know video yeah. <laughs> competing now, <laughs> and you know it's a it's a combination of you know us you know I don't know if it's you or me or vice versa, but yeah, I think oh, many... um, if I had a, if I had a kick ass connection, I'd love to have no computer. And just have yeah. it all through my phone or a TV would be amazing. Yeah, what Xbox are pitching in future looks great. Uh, sorry, just bring it back to Google. So I assume you've got some sort of future game in development, and we sort of touched on it there. Maybe speak to Google in a year. Have you? Is is are you far enough into the process now? Can you talk about a discussion? I'm not asking for specifics, but have you started yeah. having conversations about a future game with Google to appear on the service? Uh, not, not for those, not, not for the next game. Um, just, yeah, this, there was a brief period there, um, probably late last year where there was a lot of services all looking for, you know, exclusive content. Mm-hmm. Now it's, and maybe now I don't notice as much cause we don't have as much exclusive content, but yeah, it kind of goes in, in, you know, ebb and flows, you know, so VR had a really big demand. Um, and then now, now it's just kind of. It hasn't bottomed out, but there's you know it's hit it's hit the the lower end. So mm-hmm. there's always there's always demand for exclusive content. Um, yes, and I think I think you just seek it out more when you have something that's you know six to eight months away from develop uh, from release, or yeah. twelve months you know out. Um, Fair enough, that's great. Well, us, if you if you get to a point where you're six or eight months and you are speaking to them about it and you want to come back on, I'd love to hear about how that looks once you've got a working relationship with them and they sort of, as you've said, yeah. like with the success of Risk, I assume they'd sort of prioritise you guys if you were coming in with a new game, maybe they'd give you a bit extra marketing yeah. help. Yeah, I think, diff- I mean, it, it, it all depends, right? Like the, yeah. you know, we've had success with Risk, but then, you know, maybe us compared to, I, th- I think Stardew Valley's on there, you know, mm. we might be a drop in the ocean. So you know, it's um, success in this industry always begets more success. So, um, and, and it's all relative, right? So success mm. for us could mean, you know, a failure for someone else. So yeah. Um, it, yeah, absolutely. it is an interesting, it is an interesting market because, uh, you know, the, the massive success you can have on mobile, if you go free to play and if you do it well, will dwarf anything that would happen on um, one of these subscription services because why would you take a, you know, a piece of a small pie when you can have, you know, unlimited money almost from some of these games. But 
I think where it fits quite well is there's games where maybe you wouldn't have brought it, especially for PlayPass, where you wouldn't have brought it to mobile, sorry, mm. to Google Play. You might have just gone like, you know, hey, this is a premium game. Yeah, it's not really going to suit um, Android in terms of you know the, the types of users, and you can kind of um, go onto this service to kind of give you a little bit of stability. So I've spoken to other devs who had um, other smaller games, and you know for them it's done really well. It's like the revenue that we're getting from Google Play, they're getting that the same amount again just on Play Pass. So it's essentially yeah, okay. doubled their revenue on doubled their revenue on Play Pass on, on Google. Yeah, right. And, you know, so would you recommend this? Going, so. Would you recommend to any developers listening that they should absolutely petition to get their content on there? Oh, I think if you've got a quality game, um, definitely. If you if you've you know got access to the code where you can update it, you know, quite easily. You know, it's not if you're going to do six months worth of work to update it. Yeah. You know, it yep. re- it really depends. But you know, even we've had so those other games I spoke about, they were they were quite small game. Of, I wouldn't say small, but, you know, in the mobile world, they're quite small, but they're very successful in terms of um, awards and recognition. Yes. And so they have a good, they have a good brand power and they've, and they've, you know, they're, some of them are a couple of years old, but, and so they're still doing really well. Um, so if you've got a game that's, you know, still doing well, you know, relatively well uh, a year on, you know, it doesn't have to be a new release, but, you know, obviously they're like newer games. It, it's it's worth a conversation to, to reach out to them and, and try it because yeah, what we found was OTTTD, which is a very old game. You know, it was one of our first games. Um, that for a while was the most successful game on Play Pass, I think, because mm-hmm. it was a longer session tower defense. Um, yes. You know, and, and and instead of doubling the revenue, it did ten times the revenue it was oh, doing wow. people normally. So it went from you know that game which we loved making and you know didn't do you know, it didn't have that much of a long tail and long tail being, you know, how much revenue it's making year, years after year, year after year. Yes. Um, but we put on PlayPass and it's like, wow, it, it jumped up, you know, dramatically. And I was like, wow, this is really good. It's, it's settled down a little bit now, but for a while there, um, you know, it was doing really well. So you never know with the type of game. I think games that are, you know, quality games that have uh, good content in them. Um, you know, I think the hyper casuals aren't as doing as well just because, mm. you know, you bounce, you bounce from those, you know, so they'll fill in little gaps, but you want games that you can spend a bit of time on. Yeah. I think um, th- those will do best. So you might have a game that's, you know, on the Play Store already. You know, it's, it's worth reaching out, you know, if it's a quality title. Yeah, great. And so um, like we were just sort of discussing there, you've got it where it's in Game Pass and also not. So does the inclusion of Game Pass impact the sales you might run on the full pass, full price game, excuse me? No, it does. It doesn't. I mean, the only thing it does now is when you go to that um, game on the Play Store. You know, if you're not a subscriber, it will say, "Hey, this is also available on Play Pass." So there's potential, um, you know, that people will take that avenue. Mm-hmm. But um, like I said, we haven't seen a dramatic um, cannibalization at all. If if anything, for what we did find on Risk was um, we had when we launched on Play Pass, we had a massive increase in our uh, positive reviews. Because yeah, okay. you know, people, different people just mindset. came in and like different mindset. They've got it's like, you know, the all you can eat buffet. Yeah. And so we we went from maybe two hundred reviews a day. Um at, at one point we did like two thousand in one day. Yeah, well and and you're saying the percentage mix of positive versus negative changed as well? Yeah, yeah. So it w- w- was way higher because a lot of the negative reviews we have on risk, for example, would be the monetization system, you know, the, the sure. fact that it's not not play all you want for free, you know. So we have to have some reason to go. <laughs> you mean premium. I've got to pay for entertainment? Um, <laughs> yeah, it's it's quite um, yeah, it's it's quite saddening some of the the kind of messages you get where people just expect everything for free, or they go like, "Well, Fortnite is free, and yeah, you just buy skins. Why can't we do that?" And it's like, hey, if we're getting that many downloads, <laughs> you know, we we could afford to do that. So so with the play pass, you know, people are just getting everything, and it's a and we, we think it's a quality game, so that you, you know you're just getting a. A good review so that number of reviews really helped as well because it kind of um pushed our rating up so you know there's an inherent um value to that as well just the fact that, you know we're, we're higher rated now yeah and um, you've also got to wonder part of you the seo value for smg studios with this huge influx of positive talk on google play store how does that impact the smg search results in google i would hope to yeah. think in a positive fashion oh uh, yeah google's very um they 
tend to their store quite rigorously in terms of quality. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. not just um, for the rating, but also crashes and, um, you know, uh, boot up times and stuff. So if a a game, regardless of how well it's doing uh, financially, if a game's um, crashing a lot, they mm. will reduce it, if not remove it from the store's um, organic views. So yeah, right. Um, yeah, it, it's definitely it definitely helps having a high rating. I think once you go below four um, rating, it's actually quite tough. Yeah. To get um, that, so it's a combination of um, things. And I think I think Risk has done well just because it's an established brand as well. That's why we license it from Hasbro. Um, that when you that when you see it, yeah. Great pickup from a, you guys. Uh, Such a great win. I love it. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's such a you know stamp of approval that you know it's the official game. So yeah, I think again, if you've got a, a an IP or a brand or a game that you know is you know quite attractive in that sense, that's only going to help you on Play Pass as well. Because um, and can you sorry, you know, can I'll, you anywhere list yeah. the accolades on the way in? Can you say we're nominating this game for Game Pass and these are the awards it's won? Um, you can. I think it's more. It's like any pitch really. There's probably a I think yeah, at the right. start there was a form. And so you would, you know, it's just how, however you're going to pitch it. You could say, here's my game. And if it's good enough, they'll not, they'll know it. Otherwise, here's my game. And this is why you could probably, um, you know, I think with anything, you could share metrics with them as well. Like, hey, I have good day one, yeah. day seven retention. Because um, obviously the, the games that retain people more are going to do well. So, you know, they want quality on Play Pass. So you've got to yes. pitch to them why it's quality, you know, so... Yeah, that's great. And then so uh, if I can get into a little bit more of the specifics, once the game gets included into Game Pass, there's marketing, there's also the store copy and artwork, I assume, that has to be redone when you're submitting, or Uh, when it's, sorry, release, not the submission process, the actual release. Are they essentially two different store pages? No, it's the one one store page. There's some extra marketing art that you can add. that they that they utilize it in their store, but no, it's essentially one storefront, and that's again a big reason for um, uh, you know, making it makes it so much easier because you know if you had two storefronts, yes, be, you know, it's almost twice as much work. So double handling um, the work, fair enough. Do Google provide yeah, any definitely. marketing resources for you once it's in Game Pass? They they provide like templates for you know like hey here's how to mention it's on Play Pass and yep. here's how to you know you know the, all, all the usual brand guidelines they break like all the big the big uh multi-billion dollar companies you know their brand guidelines yeah. are very robust um yes. but, but they don't help you out with of sort of a we'll feature you in six tuesday's time or there's none of this no i think that's still very editorially controlled um we keep them in the loop mm-hmm. as to when we're doing updates um risk mm-hmm. is the one we update the most so we say hey we're updating this um you know this will be coming so um you know you want to keep just like any partner you want to keep them in uh, informed as to what's happening with your game and what's coming up. So yeah, we, we let them know like, hey, yeah, new 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 update, new map pack. Um, the good thing is when we say it's a new map pack or new content, you know, Play Pass users get it all straight away. So you know, it's actually a good yeah, great a good thing there. But but because we've only been able to test recently, and we can't actually test because uh, I've got a G Suite account um, because we run everything mm-hmm. through Google Docs. I can't actually get Play Pass on. <laughs> um, on that account, so I have to do, I have to set up my personal account for that. So that's one yeah, right. kind of. Can't that's what add I found that was one account interesting... as a family member. No, and you can't even get family sharing on G Suite accounts. Like G Suite accounts yeah, are their right. own, almost like yeah, own beast sub account. But it's actually really annoying because um, you know there'd be a lot of G Suite users that are um, you know corporate they'll be like oh yeah i'll add five dollars a month you know the my boss will pay yeah. for it <laughs> yeah yeah um but there must be a reason they they don't allow it but yeah it's quite quite frustrating so i've had to swap over to my personal and some same with um youtube as well like youtube mm. uh uh premium or whatever it doesn't work on g suite so uh, you know when i go to my personal youtube it's like in the dark ages like like all my algorithm <laughs> and subscriptions are all are all gone but i've got no ads that is, so it's, yeah uh, that's horrible yeah. Uh, just quickly, the wrap up as we run out of time here. Um, real quick one. Have you noticed from an analytics standpoint or can't you separate it whether there's a change? Like do people on Play Pass play for a longer game session or you can't separate those values? Yeah, we, we've asked for that separation of data as well because we can't see on our side who's who. Yeah, um, fair enough. And a, a lot of that's to do with you know privacy and sure. obviously... Um, you know, Google and Apple and all the other bigger platforms really protect their users 
quite rigorously yeah. and in some ways that they protect them so much that we can't run any um you know kind of benefits or you yeah know, you can't help me out so yeah so we, we we can't see that and we've asked for that as well like kind of can we separate the two lots because what we don't want to do is we might be getting metrics from the play pass users that are showing they play one way and we adjust our yes. game not realizing that we're adjusting it only for people who get every piece of content from the start so yeah there is a little bit of um separation needed to kind of uh you know get real in depth you know as to how different users play yeah, it's interesting stuff. Uh, my final question I've got here is just on the duration of games. Who dictates how long a game is included in Game Pass? Is that you or them? Uh, I think I think they have like a minimum 12 months. Um, but obviously with any contract, you know, it's kind of like you can get out of it within 30 days or, you know, there's a... Or, sure. No, I think it's a three-month three month cooldown. So um, I think it just goes on as long as you're, um, as long as you're happy with the, with the process. So... Um, I don't think there's any, um, you know, inf I, I think they want a minimum of 12, you know, just so they're not swapping in and out yeah. all the time. And, sure. and obviously if you, if you can go longer, um, but yeah, I think the minimum, if you put it in and it went disastrously, you could pull it out. It would take, I think you get it out in three months. Or um, you might go yeah, the other way. Us, like Grand Theft Auto 5 with Xbox Game Pass. Oh, no, Red Dead Redemption 2, they pulled Grand Theft Auto 5 out, put Red Dead Redemption in for two months and then pulled it or something crazy. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, that one's a little bit different because it's such a high, you know, those ones are, you know, much more high production, um, high cost uh, games and stuff. So, yeah, and yeah, I think that's a, a different proposition. And the way... Yeah. They, uh, game pass uh, sorry the way game pass play pays is different than play pass so all of these platforms always chat to the you know the big platform holders about them and see if they're right for you because uh there's a lot of you know i wouldn't say money left on the table but there's a lot of opportunities that you know come about you know and if obviously it, it, it does help when you have a successful game already or a, a good content so you know consider all your content as you know different things you can leverage so there's you know keep keep pitching them and you know have you know see what's out there and say hey is my game okay for that you know uh because you you can kind of you know get some good good deals slash you know good residual income for later content that's fantastic ashley thank you very much for your time mate i appreciate having you on today to talk about game pass thanks Troy. and the key message i think is for all the developers out there get in contact with google try and get some of that action it sounds like uh it's been positive things for smg studios love it when the aussie game developers get to have a good shot at it excellent all right thanks very much Trophy! <laughs> 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 Oh! Ah! Oh! <laughs> what was that? Oh! Yes! What happened? Stay off my box. Oh! Oh, trophy! <laughs> Finally! Oh!